It's the SeaWorld Splash Podcast, bringing you the latest news, rumors, and history from the SeaWorld Parks in Orlando, San Antonio, and San Diego. And now, here are your hosts, Joseph and Sheldon. Hello, and welcome to the SeaWorld Splash Podcast, episode 28. I'm your host, Joseph, along with Sheldon. Hi, everyone. And today, we have a lot to cover, such as news on why we have not done an episode lately, Shadow's Passing, Morgan's Calf, yes, Morgan had a calf, Heart of the Sea at Florida Aquarium, Doza's Return to SeaWorld San Diego, the second elephant birth, and other elephant births at Oklahoma Zoo, also pregnant elephants to report on. Let's see, we also have news from SeaWorld San Antonio, such as Turtle Reef. We also have the new Rapids ride, Infinity Falls at SeaWorld Orlando that just opened. We have a lot to cover today. Man, it's been a while since we have done an episode. Yeah, definitely been a while, but you know how it is. Busy, college life, work life, you know how it is. Yes, so without further ado, let's put on those poncho let's put on those ponchos and get ready to be drenched. <clears throat> so, as you guys have heard, uh last month Shadow the pilot whale that lived at SeaWorld San Diego with Argo passed away sadly and she was our other pilot whale who lived alongside Argo so now we are just left with Argo at SeaWorld San Diego and if you guys are wondering how Argo is doing he is doing good uh he performs with Sandy our uh our dolphin our one of our female dolphins at Dolphin Days, so he is not alone. Uh, Sheldon, what was your reaction when you heard about uh, Shadow passing? I am a little, I am very sad and uh, very um, depressed that Shadow did pass away, but I know she lived a very good life. Um, and I know for Argo, this means he's got to change his social structure, and I'm glad that he has found a new um, buddy. Um, Sandy, one of the female dolphins, and I have been recently seeing some videos, thanks to our host, of um, Arca performing with some other dolphins, uh, Bodhi, I believe, was one of them. So it's really good that he's um, reintegrating with the dolphin group. Uh, I'm glad he's making some new friends. But yes, I do send my consultants out to the Sea at San Diego Park for their loss, because I know they, a lot of people worked with Shadow, and she inspired a lot of guests. And we learned a lot about pilot whales from her and Bubbles and Hopefully we continue to have Argo in our care for as long as we can. If happens we ever get another pilot while stranding, I would definitely hopefully they'll send it to San Diego for company for Argo. But in the meantime, I'm glad San Diego is keeping him with some dolphins, though we'll still have good company. But yeah, wishing the best for Argo and a consultant to help the serial team pulls through. I was devastated to hear the news and it is good that he is with other animals that he knows and that he can understand as well. Uh, it's also sort of like with Shuka, how she was paired up with that dolphin uh, Merlin, I believe, and how she picked up his vocalizations and Shuka taught the vocalizations that of the dolphin that she lived with with our pod of nine kilo whales. So Shuka and Argo can somewhat say they have a similar story and yeah. I am looking forward to seeing Argo continue to progress in this time with the dolphins. So now, moving on, uh, why we have not done an episode recently? Well, there was a contributing factor about four weeks ago involving myself, the host. Uh, Sheldon, tell them about a phone call that you received. Yeah, so uh, I remember the event very um, fondly. I woke up in the middle of the night. Um, our host had called me saying what happened in that car accident. So we were definitely very scared. I was very worried that something had bad happened, but I'm just so thankful that our host is alive, doing all well, safe, and walking away with only minor injuries. <laughs> Uh, needless to say, everybody just be careful when you're out there driving. You never know what's going to happen, but it's tough that this happens. We do apologize, but we're just glad our host is alive and safe and able to continue doing episodes with us and further more episodes. So it was scary, but I'm glad he's okay. Yes, 
as I am here doing the episode. Yes, it, it shook me up and I did, when I did go get whatever I needed out of the car, it freaked me out to see it. And when I saw it, I, and I'm still thankful to this day that I'm living and walking. Seatbelt safe lives. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, me and another fan, um, I'm not gonna say her name for privacy reasons, uh, we went bowling that night and we were on her way back to her house and a car decided to speed and get into the lane that we wanted to, so we didn't even see that car pop into the lane we wanted to get into so yeah it shook me up pretty bad and even Sheldon can say how shaken up I was yeah it was not it was not a fun few weeks that we've had so far it's been it's been rough <laughs> but luckily we are moving forward and things are getting back to normal so now we are going to move forward and announce something that fans, I'm sure, have heard about as well. But, uh, anyways, we all remember how Morgan was pregnant. Well, she gave birth successfully to a female. We don't know if it has a name yet. We don't know the father yet. Uh, there are two possible males that could be the father. It could either be Takoa or it could be Keto. We don't know. But Morgan did have a healthy little girl. Uh, Sheldon, what are your thoughts on Morgan's calf? Yep, so I am very excited to hear that Morgan had her calf, and I'm actually really, really impressed that she, her uh, maternal instincts are kicking in. Um, I was a little worried that Cyril has been stepping in to feed the calf, but from what I'm hearing, it sounds like they're letting the calf go back and nurse from her, and they're doing nursing on and off, so that's really good. Um, I'm not sure who the father is. Um, it could definitely be Takoa or Kito. There's a good chance it probably is Kito, because he's, you know, he's a big bull, and he's pretty good at breeding, as we've seen with Aiden and Victoria. But if it is Takoa, I would be very cool, because, um, That'd be some more transient, but mine going on. Definitely would like to see that, and some tele telecom lineage. I am also curious to see how this is going to work with the um, calf as well, and the mom's relationship. Because it's going to be interesting how the mother's going to communicate with the calf, the calf's going to communicate with the, with the mother. Like you said earlier, I don't know if they're going to do any peck slaps or fluke flings or something, or maybe the mom's going to do something different, maybe more visual cues. Who knows? This is technically a first for any um, calf to work a situation, a deaf mother and a calf. And we'll see if the calf is deaf as well or not. It's going to be very interesting. But so far, she's, it's looking good. This little girl hopefully will grow up and mature and become a nice, healthy calf. And hopefully we'll see more calves in the future besides this one. And maybe this calf herself will have more calves. So definitely looking forward to the future. And we're going to see what happens next. For now, everyone just stay posted. Keep your eyes on Laurel Parquet. Yeah, that would be cool to see whose uh, father this calf is. And I am glad that Morgan has been showing that she is a good mother, even though she is deaf. And, and like, showing that protective side of her calf. And I think also being around a young killer whale, like Kohana's son, has helped has helped with uh, Morgan's parental skills so that's a really really good step for Morgan so I can't wait to see what happens and see how this calf grows and develops and to also find out if the calf is hearing or if the calf is deaf because that's a big thing too yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Morgan and the calf come up with, like, ways to communicate with each other, sort of like a peck slap, to get her calf's attention. Or when Morgan really wants to be heard, she can breach. 
<laughs> Sorry. Work encounter moment. Anyways. Congrats to Morgan and the team. And now, we have some Florida news. Uh, recently, at the Florida Aquarium, on the 6th of October, Florida Aquarium debuted a new attraction that is called... Da -da -da -da. What is it called there, Mr. Davis? All right, so I don't know if you guys know this, but the Florida Aquarium has recently unveiled their brand new exhibit, their second largest habitat of the aquarium called Heart of the Sea. Uh, I can't give too much details on it, but I'm going to say that this new brand new exhibit is going to highlight the Florida Aquarium and their mission. So about coral farming and restoration, shark conservation, and sea turtle rescue and release. So it's going to be a really important exhibit that's going to highlight all three of those elements. They have a really nice dive show in it. Um, I've seen it a couple times, very educational. So for any of you guys who are in Florida, hit me up. I do work at the Florida Aquarium as an educator. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions about this new exhibit. It's really cool. It does have quite a few animals in there to come see. There's 100,000 gallons of salt water. It is very cool. I have seen this exhibit change several times over the course of my 23 years of life. Yes, I've been in the aquarium that many times. So I've seen it change. This new exhibit is going to be really cool. It's going to be really amazing. You're going to learn a lot. So you're going to have a really good time. Hopefully see more of what the aquarium work does with coral and shark breeding and sea turtle rescue. You really need to check it out if you're ever in Florida. Definitely recommend it. Florida Aquarium is a lovely aquarium, very educational. We may not be the biggest, but we have a lot to offer in a small package. So check out Heart of the Sea. Anytime you guys are in Florida, hit me up and we'll definitely, hook, definitely get you guys into it. It sounds like an exciting exhibit. And I can't wait till I see it one of these days in person. From the sounds of it, it sounds like a really cool exhibit at the aquarium. And it sounds like a really good addition. Especially if it's talking about the conservation message and reproduction of sharks. Because sharks are misunderstood species. And people also... It also helps people learn about sharks. And learn that sharks aren't these vicious machines that uh, go out and hunt people because people are not on their menu. It's just that we look like sea lions or we're splashing in the water or we have a fresh cut that's bleeding in the water and they have that extra sensory uh, extra sense that signals them to check us out and when they take a bite of us they want to spit us out. So sharks are not the vicious killing jaws that you see in the movies. So don't don't believe jaws when you see the jaws movies. Even though one of the jaws movies did take place at SeaWorld Orlando, <laughs> ironically. Yeah, the jaws movie or even the Meg or any movie that involves sharks. Make sure you do your research, because a lot of movies do portray sharks as the monster, or the villain, and these ruthless, ferocious predators that just eat everything in sight. Let me tell you something. Observing our two big sand tiger sharks and our big nurse shark, Charlie, they're nothing like that. Sharks are a useful creature to the ocean. They keep the ocean healthy, happy, and safe by eating sick or dying fish, stopping the spread of disease, so they're really important. And it's really sad that a lot of sharks are being hunted, like our sand tiger sharks, because of people are afraid of them. So make sure before you guys watch these horror movies, before you form an opinion about shark, I re recommend you coming to an aquarium, seeing a shark, even swimming with our sharks, and getting to meet them face to face before you actually form an opinion. Because they may look scary, but they're really not monsters. They are actually incredible. And when I say incredible, incredible creatures. Yes, so I cannot wait to see this exhibit in person, like I said, and congrats to Florida Aquarium on this new exhibit. And now, another San Diego update. Dozer 
who went to Point Defiance Aquarium is now back at SeaWorld San Diego with Shushu and Minnick. So, we have three walrus, three walruses at SeaWorld San Diego. We have Dozer, Minnick, and Shushu. So, next time you're at SeaWorld San Diego, be sure to say hi and welcome back to Dozer. Sheldon, what are your thoughts on Dozer's return? Well, I'm also glad Dozer has come back to um, SeaWorld San Diego family. Um, I'm glad he did spend some time at um, Point Defiant Zoo and Aquarium with those Sumo Warrenses. I'm not sure if any of them were pregnant or not, but if they are, hopefully they were pregnant. Or we do have a baby Wars. Um, hopefully Dozer will spend some more time with Minnick and um, Shushu. And um, hopefully get some more socialization, maybe some interactions, maybe a Walrus Cafe at TLC Mako, who knows? And if you have Ginger and Aku in Orlando, I would definitely to see some more baby walruses and um, build up the captive population. But I'm really glad Dozer's back, so welcome back, Dozer. I know next time I do go to SeaWorld San Diego, I will check out the action over at Wild Arctic and say hi to Dozer. So, welcome back, Dozer, and I uh, hope everything goes well for you over there, sir. And another San Diego update again. <laughs> who writes these scripts? Oh, wait, I do. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who writes them either. Shoot. Maybe the dogs, a cat, some guy behind a magic curtain spinning around with the blizzard. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, another San Diego update. We have a new ride coming in May of 2019 called Tidal Twister. Yes, a new ride. It's going to be... How do I explain it? Right, family friendly. Yes, family friendly. Um, it's going to be... I forgot how to explain the shape of it. How do I... Uh, it's gonna be... Well, so the shape of Tidal Twister, it's a unique shape. It looks kind of similar to Manta and um, Cheetah Hunt in the structure, but it doesn't seem as, you know, as loopy or too high, you know. It definitely seems like it is more geared for our younger audience, for our families to go on. So that's a good aspect. I know a lot of road coasters these days are more geared for our bigger older generation who likes the the thrill and the adrenaline rush not quite my style but that's still a pretty unique um, element of it and it's gonna be placed over by uh Cirque Electrique I almost said Cirque Del Mer but that's the daytime Cirque and we have nighttime Cirque but we also know that the Cirque entrances will not be blocked so that's a good thing for Cirque, and uh, will I check it out? Maybe. <laughs> I've been on Electric Eel, I've been on Manta, uh, I don't know, no, no. maybe. Maybe on this ride. And also I have been on the ride that does not work. Oh, it slips my memory. Uh, oh dear. Uh, you mean the Ocean Explorer or something with that submarine? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, Submarine Quest, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are the rides I have been on at Zero San Diego. I also have been on Journey to Atlantis and Shipwreck. Oh, wow, I have been on almost all the rides at Zero San Diego. Okay. Anyways, enough of that. But yeah, SeaWorld San Diego is going to be debuting that new coaster in May 2019. So, be sure and check that out. Also, to continue with the theme of rides, Infinity Falls at SeaWorld Orlando has recently opened. It is a modified 
version, if that's the correct term you want to use, of of uh, Shipwreck Rapids in San Diego. Only Orlando's has an elevator drop to it. I have not seen it in person. Will I write it next time I'm in Orlando? Maybe. Uh, Sheldon, what is your take on this new, on these new rides that SeaWorld's debuting? So, seeing Infinity Falls, it does look a pretty fun ride. Um, probably not so good at this time of year. It is getting a little bit colder, but for the summer times, it'll definitely be a pretty useful ride. Um, I would see myself riding it. I am a bit of a sucker for the water rides and flumes, especially if it's a water ride with the tube on it that spins. I am a little bit of a sucker for it. So, I'll definitely be checking it out. If you guys are in SeaWorld Orlando, let us know what you guys think of the ride as well or any of the rides we mentioned in our talks today. We definitely have to hear your opinions on it, too. I'm like, I I know SeaWorld is definitely doing more rides to, to their parks, which is helping out with their um, economy, which is a good thing. I still personally kind of wish the money would go more to maybe new animal exhibits, <coughs> Blue Well Project. That's just me. <laughs> but overall, it looks good, and we'll see what happens with it in the future when they build it. Tigris. Yeah, so Tigris is a new um, roller coaster Bush Gardens. Tampa is going to be unveiling. Um, I will say it does look to be very, very similar to Electric Eel in San Diego. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it seems popular in San Diego, so it'll probably be popular over here at Bush Gardens, Tampa. Probably be close to the Jungala area where our tigers and orangutans live, in case you guys are wondering. Um, funny story, we took our host on one of the roller coasters in Bush Gardens called Cobra's Curse, and man, oh man, the reaction on him was, well, well, let's just say some words can't be repeated on, well, anything. We'll keep it G-rated. Let's just say, I don't think he enjoyed it as well as we thought he would, so no more coasters for him. <laughs> Ain't that right, host? And, yes, uh, there is that Tiger Rex Tiger X, that tiger theme ride, <laughs> Bush Tigress, thank you. Yes, there is that Tigress ride at Bush Gardens. Um, will I go on it? Meh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. I'll just take pictures. <laughs> uh, let's just say last time I went on Cobra's Curse, and let's just say. Sheldon witnessed how I was on that roller coaster. <laughs> Let's just say there were words on there that were said that will not be repeated on the podcast, especially since we are a family friendly podcast. <laughs> yes, so. Unfortunately, uh, we will not say what Joseph said. <laughs> I do read Tigress when I go to Orlando or to Florida next time. We'll see. But congrats to SeaWorld on those rides. And of course, in San Antonio, they are debuting a new turtle exhibit. And there's going to be. Wait for it, <laughs> another ride at Cyril San Antonio. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yes, so Cyril San Antonio is getting their own version of Turtle Reef, and they will have a ride similar to Cyril San Diego with the same name. Uh, so. There's that ride at Zero San Diego. I forgot what the name of it is called. It's by the turtles and all that. I would need to look at the map, and I really don't want to get up and look at the map <laughs> at the moment. Oh, wait, I have it on my phone. Yes, so Zero San Antonio is going to have a new ride. A lot of new rides. 
Has anyone noticed that? <laughs> yes, so SeaWorld San Antonio is getting their own turtle reef and some new rides and let me see. And that ride that SeaWorld San Antonio is gonna have in common with SeaWorld San Diego is Riptide Rescue. Basically, you're in a boat, and basically, it's like one of those rides where you uh, spin around in a circle in the air. Thank God it's not. <laughs> Thank God it's not teacups. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Anyways, congrats to SeaWorld on these new attractions and new rides. Um, can't wait to see what other cool attractions SeaWorld brings. And hopefully, hopefully we will find out soon about the Kill Whale presentations at SeaWorld Orlando and San Antonio and other new attractions that will be coming to the parks. So I believe that wraps that part up of our podcast where we were talking about the rides. Um, now, elephants. Let's talk elephants. Yes, safari park, from a safari park to Oklahoma Zoo to the Houston Zoo. Sheldon, what news do we have on these elephants? Alright, so now to my favorite part of this episode. So we've had quite a few elephant births happening. So we've had two in San Diego, a safari park. We've had one at the Oakland Zoo. So we do know the gender for um, the San Diego Fire Park. So we have a male and a female. The male who was born earlier, his name is Zuli. And the female's name is Mayaka. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And they are both the daughter and son of Mabu, another elephant who lives at Ray Park, Arizona. And Oklahoma Zoo also welcomed a little female elephant. So it's a lot of elephant births happening. Super excited for all of these. And I do believe the Houston Zoo, I believe, is the next one in line for an elephant named Shanti, who's going to be expecting a baby elephant soon. And then the Columbus Zoo in Ohio is going to be expecting a, ba- a baby elephant. One of their females, her name is Phoebe, is pregnant. So we'll hopefully be expecting that. And I do hope the elephant, who is the father, my favorite elephant, his name is Hank. He's the largest elephant in captivity at the moment. It was the Columbus Zoo. Might be the father of this unborn calf, or it could be another male. We don't know. It's been AI. So we're gonna see what happens, but I'm definitely excited. As you guys may or may not know, elephants are my favorite animal. So any elephant birth is a celebration in my day and around zoos and aquariums. So congrats to the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, Oklahoma Zoo, and the Houston Zoo and Columbus Zoo. We wish you the best of luck for your elephant births. Uh, okay. I am excited for Oklahoma Zoo and Safari Park and I can't wait to see these little bundles of joys uh, develop their personalities. I have seen, I have seen Zuli. I have pictures of little Zuli. He is so cute. I remember the day I went to see him. <laughs> Everyone was like freaking out. I spotted him. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Zuli. I like ripped my, I grabbed my phone out of my pocket. I started taking pictures. I have a video called uh, Sheldon on Instagram. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, um, the host was so very gracious. He actually um, did a live um, video chat with me on Instagram and showed me baby um, Zuli. And he was just a few days old. That was super exciting. Um, so I got to see how he was interacting with his mom in the herd, and as I expected, mommy's being a very good mother and keeping him very close. That's pretty typical of female elephants, um, whether it's in the wild or in captivity. They keep the calves within at least trunks reach of them, because the, the calf is very vulnerable, believe it or not. You know, elephants are the biggest land animal on the planet. They still start out small. So this female, she's doing a really good job of being a good mother. 
And since Zuli is a boy, he'll probably stay with his herd for about 10 more years. 10 to 12 is when the range, when they start hitting that range of, of um, age where they're like, you know what? Females will kick him out because he's a big boy. He'll be all grown up and he doesn't even stay with the herd. So I'm definitely excited to see him grow and get bigger over the next 10 years. <laughs> but I do want to say thank you. Special thanks to our host for providing you with that live video of Zuli. So hopefully I'll get to travel out and see you and see him and his half sister. And hopefully see if they've done any growing and see the San Diego's fire part herd. Woo! So it was cute to see baby Zuli. I got plenty of pics of him. And actually, the uh, the day before Zul uh, Zuli's half sister was born, I was planning to go to the safari park. So I would have been there the day before Zuli's half sister was born, but uh, unfortunately. The turn of events happened, but I am excited for the safari park and all, and can't wait to see more baby elephants in the future. So, congrats to the safari park and Oklahoma Zoo. And wasn't there a... Yes, in the Houston Zoo. But yes, congrats to all these zoos and especially to the safari park yes we will definitely keep everyone up to date on any news that we hear and let's see we also have a new species highlight this evening so Sheldon take it away with species highlight and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Species Highlights, the part of the show where I explain to you about certain species, its relatives, and where they come from. Sit back and enjoy. All right, here we go, here we go. So today's Species Highlight is obviously going to be on octopus. Octopus a beautiful, magnificent, and intelligent creature found in the oceans. The octopus vary in sizes, the smallest being the Wolfie's octopus at less than two centimeters long, to the giant Pacific octopus, which can get up to 23 feet across from arm to arm. The octopuses have several unique superpowers. They can change the color and the texture of their skin in the blink of an eye. And they can squeeze through tiny spaces because, as you know, they don't have any bones. The only hard part of an octopus is their parrot-like beak. Whatever that beak can fit into, an octopus can fit into as well. And speaking of that beak, did you know octopuses are also venomous? It's true. In fact, one of the most venomous creatures on the planet is known as the blue ring octopus, an octopus that only gets a few inches long but has bright blue rings on its body to scare away predators and warm Hey, I am venomous. Now, if the blue ring octopus does bite you, you are going to be in a world of trouble. But most octopus bites do, with venom aren't that powerful. Now, octopus have a favorite food, usually clams, but they'll also take fish as well. At the Florida Aquarium where I do work at, we have two species of octopus, the Caribbean octopus and the giant Pacific octopus. A Caribbean octopus, his name is Squash. And our giant Pacific octopus, his name is Wally. Now, octopus unfortunately have very short lifespans. On average, they only live about one to two years. Most giant Pacific octopuses in captivity live about five to six years, and that's about it. When an octopus mates, and that's it. The male will release his, his or detach his spermatophore arm to the female, which he'll store and use to fertilize her eggs, and then he will slowly die. Then, she will find a safe place to lay her eggs, and she'll protect them and clean them, but she won't eat a thing for the next few months. And when the babies hatch, they're no bigger than a grain of rice, and she can have up to hundreds of babies. And then she will slowly die as well. And it's sad <coughs> how smart animals have a very, very short lifespan. 
but it's still really cool to see them. There's another cool octopus I have to mention because of the species highlight known as the Mimic Octopus. Now, this species of octopus is one of the most clever and most crafty because it can transform into different animals. It's true. The Mimic Octopus is unique because it'll mimic other animals, hence why it gets its name. It can spread out its arms and tentacles to look, I'm sorry, arms, squids have tentacles, octopus have arms, excuse me. It'll spread out its arms and look like a poisonous lionfish. Or it'll flatten its body and swim along the bottom of the sand and look like a flounder. If it's also threatened, it'll put a couple arms into a hole and leave two out and look like a venomous sea snake. Any way an octopus can, it can use to distract and hopefully escape being eaten or to catch its prey. We thank you for joining us on our species highlight on Octopus, as it was World Octopus Day recently. And oh, before I go, I'm going to leave you with a quick little question so you can get it right. What order of animal do octopus follow? What, I'm sorry. What phylum or order of animals do octopus follow? fall under? Is it A. Mollusk B. Fish C. Reptiles or D. Mammals The answer coming up at the end of this episode. Thank you. Thank you for that species highlight. And as always we want to thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for a topic or any species highlight suggestions or you want to share your SeaWorld story with us you can call or text our number 407-900-5309 or email us at SeaWorldSplashTeam at gmail.com you can even drop by and say hello don't forget to give us that like on Facebook <laughs> at facebook.com forward slash SeaWorld Splash Podcast. Also, follow us on Twitter at SeaWorld Splash, as well as Instagram at SeaWorld Splash, as well as Snapchat. <laughs> yes, for all of those out there, we do have Snapchat. <laughs> yes. Also, don't forget to check out our website www.seaworldsplash.com to check out past episodes and also recent episodes and you can also check out those episodes on YouTube as well. We will put that link in the description. And also check us out on iTunes at Seaworld Splash Podcasts. And from all of us here on the Seaworld Splash team, we thank you for joining us and hope you join us for the next amazing podcast to come. Splash you later. Take care, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Oh, I almost forgot. Did you guess the question right that we asked you earlier? I asked, which phylum does the octopus fall under? Was it A, mollusk, B, fish, C, reptiles, or D, mammals? And if you chose A, mollusk, you're absolutely correct. Awesome job, guys. And take care. And have a great rest of your day wherever you are. Goodbye. Remember, if you want to share any of your favorite SeaWorld stories or memories, please call or text the SeaWorld Splash Team, 407-900-5309. Once again, that number is 407-900-5309. Or email us at SeaWorldSplashTeam at gmail.com. Thank you, and we'll splash you later.